Uh, welcome, everybody. This is the Committee on Labor, Culture, and the Arts. So <clears throat> we have a number three sets of hearings today. Um, today is March 21st, Monday, 2022, uh, it's 3 p.m., and we are in Rome 225. Um, for our first hearing, our three o'clock hearing, uh, we have one bill, House Bill 1924. This is relating to the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. It appropriates funds to the State of Hawaii Museum of Monarchy History and the State of Hawaii Museum of Natural and Cultural History. Um, prior to beginning the three hearings, I need to make a couple of housekeeping announcements. Um, in the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 3 p.m. on Wednesday, March 22nd, 3rd, 23rd. <laughs> okay, March 23rd in this room, 225. Um, and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. Um, <clears throat> we also have, um, interestingly, we have a two minute time limit on testifiers for the three o'clock hearing. And then we have one minute um, testifier time limit on the 305 hearing and the 315 hearing. So with that, um, I will proceed to House the three o'clock <clears throat> agenda and House Bill 1924. Um, let's see, I believe on Zoom, we have Zoom testifiers, um, the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Mr. Johnson. Good afternoon, Chair Tanaguchi, members of the committee. State Foundation stands on our testimony in support. Thank you. Um, we have um, <clears throat> testimony from DLNR, Mr. Cottrell. Still muted, Kurt. Uh, good right. afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Sorry, I just jumped off uh, from another hearing. Apologies for being late. Uh, Kurt no Cottrell, uh, Administrator Division of State Parks, and we stand um, on our written testimony in support of any degree of uh, additional funding that can be allocated toward uh, Iolani Palace. Much appreciated. Mahalo. Thank you. Um, let's see, we have um, testimony from the Bishop Museum. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Chair Taniguchi, members of the committee. Kaivi from Bishop Museum. We stand on a written testimony. Here to answer questions if you have them. Thank you. Um, testimony from <clears throat> Friends of Iolani Palace, Paula Akana. Hi, good afternoon, Chair and committee members. Um, we stand on our testimony in support of this bill and stand by with any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, we also have uh, comments from the Department of Budget and Finance and testimony in support from Ashley Ono, Gerard Akaka, um, Jan Harada for the H.T. Hayashi Foundation, uh, Historic <clears throat> Hawaii Foundation, um, see Friends of Iolani Palace, um, Leilani William Solomon and Mark Shklov, along with uh, Pono Shim and John, De John DeFries from the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Okay, so that's our testifiers. Um, do you have any questions from members? Okay, um, no questions. Uh, we will, I guess, uh, proceed to our 305. Um, I don't have quorum at the present time, so we'll vote on this bill, um, hopefully after the 305 hearing. So, um, yeah, we'll vote for it after, possibly that. If not, we'll have to wait till we have we do establish quorum. Okay, so we'll proceed to um, our 305 hearing. Uh, let's see, we have 
two bills, um, House Bill, begin with House Bill 2329, House Draft 2, relating to historic preservation. Uh, this requires the Department of Land and Natural Resources to place historical markers in the state to indicate significant sites in the life of President Barack Obama, identified by the department in consultation with the Hawaii Tourism Authority and State Foundation of Culture of the Arts. Um, testifying, we have um, Mr. Downer for DLNR. Not present, Chair. Um, we also have, oh, Jonathan Johnson uh, from State Foundation of Culture of the Arts. <clears throat> Which the State Foundation is willing to work with the LNR, of course, on this. So we have comments, that's all. Thank you. Um, see, we also have comments submitted by uh, the Department of Budget and Finance. Um, as well as from the Society for Ar Hawaiian Archaeology. Uh, we have testimony and support from the Hawaii Tourism Authority, Mr. DeFries, as well as um, from Alfonso Braggs of the Hawaii NAACP. Uh, we, have, we also have testimony in opposition from an individual, uh, Ale Alexis Antracoli. With that, um, do you have any questions from members on this bill? Okay, we'll proceed to the next bill, which is um, <clears throat> House Bill 2449, House Draft 1. This is relating to the Hawaii State Archives. It appropriates funds to establish staff positions, authorize issuance of general obligation bonds to finance the construction of an additional building for the State Archives. Okay, um, on this one, um, I just need to announce, I know there's a lot of testimony um, in opposition, um, but um, based on that, Chair is gonna recommend that we um, take out that uh, part three. So um, if you would like to still testify about that, you're certainly entitled to, but it may save us some time uh, if if you know that that's what we're that's where we're headed we're all sort of agreed on that so um okay house bill 2449 house draft one we have um mr otoguro from the department of county general services who is i am representing him represented by mr adam chance all Chair, right. members of the committee, I thank you for the opportunity to testify on this bill. I'm here representing the Comptroller. DAG stands on its testimony, and we do thank you for removing part three. It was never our intention to cause angst among our fellow archivists. And I do want to point out that our facility was, was constructed over 70 years ago. And in 95, we had 29 FTE. We now have 20% more holdings, 150% more public interactions, and half the staff. We want to do more. We have to do more. The pandemic has shown how important a function this, the public archive serves in people's lives. We want to digitize more. The building cannot support anything more. We are full and we're at a loss of what we're going to do preserving memory moving forward. So we appreciate your consideration of this bill and we're available for any questions you may have. Thank you. Is it Dr. Jensen? Sure. Yes. Okay. Um, we have testimony from the Department of Health. Well, the chair, members of the committee, Lauren Kim, and the policy and planning officer, but also the um, acting state registrar. In light of your announcement on um, removal of part three, we are very grateful, thank you. Uh, but I would like to just take 30 seconds to say, we do support more resources for DAGs to digitize records. I could certainly use their help in this book of vital events on Molokai from 1859. That's the reign of King Lunalino, I think. Um, it's falling apart. We could sure use their expertise in, in, in assuring that these precious records, one of a kind records, are preserved. It's written in Hawaiian, you know, red, it's, uh, it says Make. So these are the people who died on Molokai during that time. So thank you for removing part three. Um, we can't live without these documents, but we certainly support more appropriations for DAGs to help digitize 
uh, all the records across agencies. So thank you. Give me with Mr. Johnson after this. Okay. Um, we have Dylan R. Chairperson, please. Aloha, Chair. Uh, my name is Les Kobata. I'm the Registrar of the Bureau of Conveyance representing DLNR. We thank the Chair and the Committee for looking at our testimony and um, we offered comments and concerns. And I guess you were reading our comments and concerns because that was exactly what it was. We removed Section 3. So thank you very much for that support and uh, we're available for any questions if they, if they are. Thank you, Mr. Kobata. Uh, we also have testimony from the University of Hawaii. Not present, Chair. Okay. Um, with comments. Um, oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, Deborah Halbert for President Lasner. There you go. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, as I, I'm Deborah Halbert, Associate Vice President for Academic Programs and Policy for the University of Hawaii System, representing President Lasner, and like the others, welcome the removal of Part Three. So thank you for that, and otherwise defer to Dags and their testimony, and then stand on our own. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Halbert. Okay, we have um, testimony from Helen Wong Smith. Oh, hello. Short person. Um, I also want to thank you for removing part three. And with your indulgence, I'd like to um, just, um, because I'm representing 76, 76 signatories opposing um, HB 2449. And our main reasons is that the action goes against fundamental archival principles. Uh, dismantling the context of these records in the course of operations. The action also negates the deed of gift, a legally binding contract between donors and the repository they select to deposit their records. I bring this up because in the event that this might uh, come up again. Um, we also um, find that part two, section three, paragraph four, allowing the state archives to centrally acquire and preserve the archives of underrepresented aging and marginalized communities records dismisses the efforts of the dozens of repositories across the islands to build collections. And each community across Hawaii has a stake in having direct and nearby access to Hawaii and native Hawaiian archival records in their own local institutions. So instead we hope that DAGs and the Hawaii State Archives should consult and collaborate with arch archives and cultural heritage centers across the islands toward a sustainable plan to preserve the records of these communities statewide. Mahalo. Thank you, Ms. Wong Smith. Um, Molly Rowe on Zoom. Hi, my name is Molly Rowe and I'm the Curator of Archives and Librarian at Hawaiian Mission Houses and I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to give testimony and I've also given written testimony. Um, I wanted to also thank you for the removal of Section 3, but I also wanted to go forward and say um, that I would appreciate and recommend that this bill be tabled completely because I think that the bill in its entirely gives, gives too much authority to the state archives um, as professionals, we are entitled to a safe space to work and collaborate, and this bill um, has caused division and discouraged community building in the library and archives world. And if you allow this bill to pass, it will set the precedent that the state archives has the sole authority over all the other archives in the state. The state archives has gone after private collections, including my own uh, organization, in a separate lawsuit so, suit, or threatened a separate lawsuit um, towards specific collection materials. And I want to go forward and say that I don't think that this is where this will end if Section 3 by is removed. I think that given the testimony, given the written testimony you received, um, considering table bill entirely. And I really, um, thank you. Oh, Ms. Rowe, I think we kind of got the last part of your testimony garble i give you an opportunity to kind of repeat that last section since it may be important maybe she's frozen out 
Charity, she, she seems to be having connectivity issues. Okay, I guess we will proceed then. So we've got the gist of what you were saying. Okay, um, Tara Rojas on Zoom. Aloha. Aloha. Yeah, so thank you for this opportunity to testify as well as for removing part three, but as Molly was saying, I believe this bill in, in its entirety should be uh, just scrapped and, you know, just re really think it. I know the, the intention was to preserve. However, there was actually, you know, testimony from a professional, um, professional archivist that said that this actually goes against the professional archivist uh, standards core values and code of ethics. So I just wanted to point this out. So if you look, you know, online, it's just kind of a search it, Society of American Archives, just two statements. It has the core values, code of ethics, and it also says, we also acknowledge that archivists and archival practices are never neutral. And keeping in mind that today, Keanu Sai delivered his message regarding the U.S. occupation of Hawaii, 129 years still later, that to the UA, to the UN today, that just this really coincides that again that archivists and archival practice are never neutral, and it's going to be all in the hands of the state of Hawaii, which technically is not valid given that there is no treaty of annexation. So that was one, and the other one is it also states that. It mm -hmm. should be noted that historical uh, records held within the archives often afford the most power to those who create and control the archive itself. So again, it's never neutral and it gives a power though to those yeah. who control it, which in this case would be a state of Hawaii. And I really believe that the native Hawaiians should and the Kanaka Maoli should be the only ones in charge of their material. Their yeah, yeah, and so no uh, thank you. in Hawaiian hands. Mahalo. Thank you. Uh, Ellen Ray Cachola. Yes, yes. Oh. Hello, Senators. Hello. Um, the Committee on Labor, Culture, and the Arts. My name is Dr. Ellen Ray Cachola. I am the archives manager at the William S. Richardson School of Law Library. And I'm testifying as an individual citizen in opposition to HB 2449, HD1, because it needs to be amendment amended. Thank you for striking part three. But just to clarify, I think that it just needs to define which state agencies and departments will be required to inventory and send their Hawaii and Native Hawaiian records to the state archives. The University of Hawaii system and archives libraries are state agencies but we should be excluded from that definition because we preserve and provide access to Hawaii and Native Hawaiian records for public education. And then also please remove part two, section three, paragraph four, because it is not the Hawaii State Archives function to centralize, acquire, and preserve the records of underrepresented aging and marginalized communities. There are over 50 archival mm -hmm. repositories and cultural centers across the Hawaiian islands, and they should be consulted and collaborated with to create a locally driven sustainable plan to preserve the communities of uh, a diverse community statewide. Mahalo. Thank you, just some time. Um, Alfred Medeiros. Hello, my couple, Alfred oh. Medeiros. Oh, okay. Hello, my couple, Alfred Chapman Medeiros uh, from Wailai Oahu. Uh, here in opposition of HB 2449, regardless of the part three being striked, as you can, um, I'm a Kanaka Maoli. You know, Kiao on my hat, as you guys can see, it means protector. The archives has been stored to protect and preserve our history. Passing it on to the state would be everything that we're against. Um, as you know, we've been fighting for 129 years, illegally occupied. There's documents in there for land rights, history, and so much stuff, you know, so much heavy history within there. We don't trust the state to hold that type of records, regardless of what it is, regardless of the clarification. It needs to be kept in Hawaiian hands, kept in our people's hands. So that's why I'm opposed on this. Jared, I know you're Kanaka Mole. I know you understand where I'm coming from with this. We need to preserve it. We need to keep in the archives. And if you guys have plans of doing things, reach out to the Native Hawaiian community and the leaders of the Native Hawaiian community first and foremost. Maybe you guys can put together a committee that would actually help build both sides together instead of just picking the state to take over and everything. Mahalo for you guys' time. 
a lot. Thank you. Um, I believe that's all the testimony we have that's live. Um, we also have uh, many uh, testimonies in opposition um, that have been submitted, as well as some additional comments from a couple of individuals. Um, do we have any questions from members? All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, I guess. So. Yeah. I guess okay. So. Okay, Adam. I. Sir. How did this whole situation get, get end up like this? The I. The bill I read is for more capacity for your existing collection. I, I, I. Thank you. I. I think part of it it was good intentions. We did not introduce this bill. Okay. The introducer of this bill wanted to empower the archives through more facilities and more staff. And in that path of good intention, also thought to make sure that some of the state agencies that do not have archival institutions, uh, proper storage. This really is an outpouring from legislators touring some of the state agencies in the state. There's been some questions about space utilization. They're seeing important historical records, not in archival protected professional care, custody, environmental controls, fire suppression. And so I can only presume the thought was, we have a state archives to do that. Why are these records not there? So that was the outpouring. We did not ask for that. We, we did ask for more staff and more facilities. We're full. And we cannot keep up with the number of requests that we currently have. We've, we've put over 4 million pages of information online over the last few years. We want to do more. What, what, if, what if you don't live on Oahu? You need to have equal access to your public records. We don't have the staff to do that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Adam. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Uh, we will move on to our 315 hearing um, and we'll defer decision making on the previous three bills till uh, right after our, uh, <clears throat> we take up the two bills that we have for 315, which may take a while. So again, remember, um, try to limit your comments to a minute. Uh, we have your written testimony. Uh, we've reviewed most of it. There's some late stuff. Um, okay, we'll, so for our 315 hearing uh, for labor, culture, and the arts, we'll begin with House Bill 2240, House Draft 1. Uh, this is relating to other post-employment benefits. It authorizes general obligation bonds for the payment or prepayment of other post-employment benefits, liability, um, and other things. Okay. Testifying, we have um, Wes Machida. I see him. Wes, I see him. Yes. On Zoom. Oh, on Zoom. Sorry. So Machida. Yes. Good afternoon, Chair. Members of the committee. Uh, Wesley Machida, representing myself. Uh, you have my written testimony and I stand in full support of this measure as it provides uh, an alternative financing option to help better address the unfunded and liabilities of the EUTF. And there's important safeguards built within that'll ensure that this will benefit everyone concerned, members, employers, taxpayers. And I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Machida. Uh, we also have testimony and support from the Department of Budget and Finance, as well as from uh, HGEA, uh, Mr. Pereira, the Executive Director. Um, do you have any questions from members? If not, uh, we'll proceed to um, House Bill 2510, House Draft 2. This is relating to income. It makes the state earned income tax credit refundable and permanent provides for carry forward of non-refundable credits previously claimed, uh, incrementally increases the minimum wage, 
and TIP credit beginning on January 1st, 2023. Okay. Um, first up, we have um, Mr. Isaac Choi from the Department of Taxation, the director. Uh, yes, Chair, Jonathan White on behalf of the Director of Tax. The department submitted comments on the bill. We'll stand on our written comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, from Department of Labor, Industrial Relations, the Director and Pereira Pistacchio. Good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. Anne Eustachio, Director, Department of Labor. We stand on a written testimony in support with comments. Thank you for the opportunity to testify and I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, uh, we have testimony from Il Gelato, Hawaii. On Zoom. Not present, Chair. Okay, um, and that was testimony in opposition. Uh, we have testimony from Yotaku Japanese restaurants. Mr. Jones said he was in person, but I don't see him here. Right? Is he on Zoom by any chance? No? No, um, Chair. Okay. Okay. Um, Kelly Kogo, Kogo, uh, on Zoom. Not present, Chair. James D. Giambattista. Not present, Chair. And this Kate not present, Chair. Also in opposition, I think. Mr. D. Gian Battista was in support. <clears throat> um, Margaret Wiley, Willie? Not present, Chair. Uh, that is also in opposition. Um, Flora Patton. I'm here. I'm, I'm on Zoom. Aloha, Senator Tenkikuchi and on uh, and uh, Labor, Culture, and Art. My name is Flora Patton. I am with the uh, Hawaii Clubhouse Advocacy Coalition. I gi am giving um, testimony because I feel, I feel strongly uh, about raising the minimum wage to $18 by 2026. Raising the minimum wage by 2028 would, would take too long. We can barely make ends meet right now because of inflation has been raised, uh, me, uh, uh, raising steady, but not our income. People have a hard time giving in living in Hawaii because of the cost of living. Thank you for your time, Flora Patton. Thank you. Um, you are welcome. Uh, next, we have uh, Lisa Hallett in person. Not present, Chair. Okay, in opposition. Um, Anthony Samuels. Not present, Chair. Both of those were in opposition. Ingrid Peterson. Kristen Alice for Community Alliance Partners. Not present, Chair. HS Hawaii State Association of Counties. Anybody from the Hawaii Association, State Association of Counties? Ah, 
Tina Yamaki for Retail Merchants of Hawaii. Maybe I shouldn't have had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Tina Yamaki with the Retail Merchants of Hawaii. And while we understand the intent of this bill, we still like um, House Draft 1 better on this. The um, increase is a little slower, and we're also asking that it stop at $15. Um, my friend from the chamber can explain a little bit more about the survey that they've done, but especially our smaller local businesses that are like only one shop, so a couple of shops here in Hawaii, they are going to die if it goes above $15. They're having a hard time already, as we mentioned in our testimony. We also want to um, bring up again that minimum wage was never intended as a living wage. It's always a starting wage. A lot of times... Um, and I have been taken out of context when I've said this, but some of our people, we have to train them. You know, they come in, we have to tell them, dress in clean clothing, you know, brush your hair, come, you know, on top of also having to do customer service. And even if you are a, <clears throat> excuse me, even if you are a university student or graduate, you still have to be trained on uh, systems and things. So there is some of that, and you do get higher up in wages. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. <clears throat> the Hawaii Clubhouse Advocacy Coalition, Mr. Teranishi. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Chairman. Yes, yeah, so, so my name is Duran, and uh, you know, as far as the bill, I appreciate you folks moving it from 2030 to 2028. Uh, my concern is that because of the cost of living, and especially, you know, with, with um, all this oil prices going up, uh, other, other factors come into play. And um, as far as, you know, having um, not the $18 by 2026, and on top of that, with the people that are affected by this tip credit, uh, just just subtracting that per hour, it just doesn't make any sense uh, for the cost of living to be uh, appropriate at, at the wage that uh, they're earning. Yeah? So I, I oppose the bill and uh, that's, that's my concern. Thank you, Mr. Ternishi. Um, Tax Foundation of Hawaii, Mr. Yamachika. Thank you, Chair and members. Tom Yamachika from uh, Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Uh, we uh, have submitted written comments. We just wanted to emphasize uh, that, you know, he, here in Hawaii, we have uh, several disparate programs and tax credits aimed at poverty relief. Uh, all of these credits are very complicated. They have non-duplication provisions and strict time limits on when they may be claimed upon pain of credit forfeiture. Um, apparently lawmakers of the past had many different ideas of how to address the problem of poverty in paradise, uh, but couldn't figure out which program to go with, so they went with them all. The principal disadvantage of this is that people can and do get confused uh, over which credits they can they can and can't claim, and the department doesn't make it easy. Uh, we uh, have a, a piece coming out. Um, it just came out uh, earlier today, uh, noting that uh, if you look at the N11, which is our tax return, you can't figure out how to claim the credit. There's there's nothing there. You have to pull different things to even have a chance at that at understanding and, and uh, uh, getting the right forms and instructions. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. Um, next, we have Gavin Thornton from the Hawaii Appleseed Center for Law and Economic Justice. Aloha, Chair Tanaguchi, Aloha. members of the committee. Um, my name is Gavin Thornton. I'm the Executive Director of Hawaii Appleseed. Uh, and we submitted very detailed testimony on how important it is to increase the minimum wage, how important it is to make the earned income tax credit permanent and refundable. So I'll just share the bottom line. Uh, and the bottom line is like it, we simply cannot go on paying people uh, who are working 40 hours a week less than what they need to afford the very basics, food and shelter just doesn't make sense. We can't do it anymore. We, we can't just maybe snap our fingers and, and switch it right away. But what we can do is provide an immediate significant increase followed by multiple increases afterwards to get that minimum wage closer to a real living wage. It's not gonna get us all the way there, 
but it's super important that we move and move quickly. People have been waiting for four years since the last bump, huge inflation since then, and um, for decades to get a wage that gets closer to paying for food and shelter. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thornton. Um, Stonewall Caucus of the Democratic Party, Mr. Gulliu. Jr. Uh, good afternoon, Chair. Michael Gloy, Jr. for the Stonewall Cox of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Um, we stand in support of the bill, but we do ask for the amendments of $18 an hour by 2026 and the deletion of the TIP credit. Um, I'm really glad to see the opposition is into recycling because they're saying the same things this year that they did back when we fought for 1010. So please don't believe their scare tactics when it comes to a labor shortage out there. There's not a labor shortage. There's a shortage of people willing to work for poverty uh, wages. And that's what you're working for when you're not getting a living wage. As this idea that uh, uh, these minimum wage jobs are, you know, have to be paid less because you're training them. As somebody that's worked at HR, I can tell you there's training when you bring anybody on. And so um, that was a very elitist comment that was made earlier. And I find that this disheartening in, the, in that said in the Aloha State. So we encourage you that to amend the bill, pass something now, because even your own Department of Labor says that this is not a livable wage and our taxpayers need to stop um, shouldering the burden for those businesses that can't pay a living wage. Mahalo. Thank you, Mr. Gulio. Um, Grassroots Institute of Hawaii, Mr. Kefalis. Not present, Chair. Okay. Yeah, comments. Um, Hawaii Petroleum Markets Association. Not present, Chair. Uh, Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. Thank you, Chair, members of the committee, Trevor Abrazu with the Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii. Uh, the Chamber offered comments, and we want to reiterate that we do support an increase in the minimum wage, but at this time, we have concerns of how fast it jumps up to $13 and the level it goes up by 2028. Uh, many of our Chamber members already pay well over the minimum wage, but we're most concerned about our smallest businesses and the ones that couldn't be able to uh, stay open or might have to cut employees because of this. And the chamber did, uh, in partnership with retail merchants, Hawaii Food Industry Association, lodging and tourism, and other neighbor island chambers, a survey, a second survey, based on feedback from the House Labor Committee. And a total of 264 businesses participated. 50% of those businesses had 25 employees or less. And 58% of businesses that responded said they would need to reduce staff if minimum wage increased to $18 by 2026. And 49% said they would need to reduce staff if it increased to 18 by 2030. And 12% of those businesses said they would need to lay off half of their workforce if it went up to $18 by 2026. Now, 26% said they would need to shut down their company entirely if minimum wage increased to $18 by 2026. And 17% said they would need to close down if it was 18 by 2030. Now, this survey was done before uh, House Resolution Number 2, so it's based on those years, but... Just want to reiterate, those are our concerns based on the data and based on the survey. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mm. Boy Children's Action Network speaks. Ms. Wu. Aloha, Chair. Um, I guess Vice Chair isn't here. Senator <laughs> Keoho Kalole and any on Zoom. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in person. Um, as one of the prior testifiers said, we heard a lot of these same worries and concerns from the business community in 2014. So um, I took a look at some of them. Um, between 2014 and 2018, when we raised the minimum wage here in Hawaii, the number of small businesses measured both by those with less than 500 people uh, working for them and also really small businesses with less than 20 employees. The number of those businesses increased during those years, as did the number of workers at them. I also looked specifically at restaurant workers and the number of restaurant workers increased by 32% in the years that the minimum wage went up the last time. I would put the burden of proof on them because the last time they predicted that the sky would fall, it didn't happen. For context, we all know that our state has the highest cost of living. When you look at the next seven states that have the highest cost of living in the nation, uh, two of them are already at or above $15. They're all above 12, at $12.50 or above. 
and a bunch of them have already raised passed laws to raise the ways to raise the wage to fifteen dollars by twenty twenty five. So that's just some context um, for um, your bill as you consider uh, passing it today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bush. I believe that is all the testifiers that we have. Did anybody else jump back on? Oh, okay. Uh, Pamela. Mahalo. Uh, the Maui Chamber of Commerce does support a minimum wage increase, but we do prefer the staggering to 2030, and we deeply appreciate the tax credits. And ask, but we also ask that you continue to hear the voice of business as businesses are raising their wages and have done so substantially since we, the pandemic. And this is, we've seen a great labor shortage. So I disagree with the earlier testifier who says people don't wanna work for a pittance. We have many examples where wages have been uh, jumping not by a dollar, but by you know several dollars in categories. Um, and yet they're still struggling to find the amount of employees they need. They're also struggling because the PPP loans help them fund wages earlier on and that PPP funding has ended. But the minimum wage will never keep up with Hawaii's living wage. And it's really important that we also address housing, electricity, gas, and more. Um, you know, we are seeing everybody talk about inflation and we're watching this across the nation, not unique to us, but we know what Hawaii goes through. And so as we look at this, we also need people to understand that one, we have to deal with the balance side of addressing the other inputs to a living wage while also addressing a minimum wage and help people understand that as the minimum wage goes goes up, inflation goes up. It also thank creates, you, oh, Don't I'm problem. done. Okay, thank you so much for the opportunity. Mahalo. No problem, thank you, thanks. Um, I believe we also have Kristen Alice from Community Alliance Partners. Aloha, Ready? thank you for hearing my testimony. My name is Kristen Alice and I'm from Community Alliance Partners. We're a coalition to end homelessness on Hawaii Island. I'm also representing Hope Services Hawaii, a homeless services provider. And we are offering comments on this measure. Um, like other testifiers have said before us, we, the, we have to get the minimum wage up to $18 an hour by 2026. It already costs $19 an hour just to survive um, here in Hawaii. The other thing we've got to do is eliminate the tip penalty because this puts people at an unfair um, disadvantage and increases the risk of sexual harassment um, and other abuse at the workplace. Um, the way this impacts homelessness, um, like the previous testifier said, yes, absolutely, we have to address housing too. Um, but the problem is, is that people who are working full-time jobs cannot afford a home, not even for themselves, and definitely not if you are a single parent with a family. Um, and we gotta, we have to make it better for people that live here. Um, the the wants of people who work um, in business, people who own businesses should never be placed among the needs of the people that have the least and the people that need the most and the people who are literally dying on the streets because they can't afford housing in Hawaii. And part of that, a big part of that is the minimum wage. It's gotta be higher and it has to be higher faster. Thank you so much for hearing my testimony, mahalo. Thank you. Uh, staff, is there anybody else? Oh, oh. oh. Mr. Bradshaw. Jason Bradshaw, representing the Iron Worker Stabilization Fund. My apologies for the late testimony. We thought we had got it submitted, only to look on it and say it was still pending. So apologies. Um, we strongly support raising the minimum wage to $18 an hour um, today, but unfortunately and respectfully, we have to oppose HB 2510 HD2 because it simply takes too long to get $18 an hour and because of the sizable increase of the tip penalty. We believe that should be eliminated and we hope to get to $18 an hour um, as quickly as possible, no later than 2026. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you, Mr. Bradshaw. Was there anybody else, staff? Thank you. Do you have any questions from my loyal member? <laughs> we sat through the whole thing. <laughs> okay, I guess we will have to uh, we'll take a recess to try to get our quorum. Okay, so recess.
Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, this is the Committee on Labor, Culture, and the Arts. So uh, we had a couple of hearings, one at 3, one at 3.05, and one at 3.15 to cover a couple of bills. Um, we'll begin with our 3 p.m. agenda, um, which was for House Bill 1924. This is relating to the Hawaii, Hawaii State Foundation on Culture and the Arts. Uh, it appropriates funds to um, the Bishop Museum and to uh, Iolani Palace. Chair's gonna recommend we pass with amendments um, that we just further uh, defect the effective date to July 1st, 2050 and make technical non-substantive amendments for the purposes of clarity and consistency. Any discussion? If not, Senator Ihara. You heard the chair's recommendation to pass House Bill 1924 with amendments. Chair Taniguchi. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator Kiho Kololi. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. The recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members, um, for our 305 agenda. Um, we had uh, House Bill 2329, House Draft 2. This is relating to historic preservation. Uh, this is about the Ob Obama sites. Um, Chair is going to recommend that we pass with amendments. Um, and further defect the date. Um, we will make some technical amendments to tighten the language and uh, other uh, non-substantive amendments for the purposes of clarity and consistency. Any discussion? Chair, Chair, would you like to clarify the amendments that you would like to make to the bill? Um, okay, I have them here, so. Um, as far as amendments, um, the technical ones we're talking about to tighten the language will amend to provide that the department shall place historical markers at the locations identified pursuant to subsection A, provided that one, if the location identified for a historical marker is on private property or is used as a private residence, the historical marker shall be placed on the property only if the owner of the property agrees to have the marker placed at the location and two, if the owner of the property does not agree to have a marker placed on the owner's property, the marker shall be placed on public property in close proximity to that location. So that's our redrafted language. Any discussion? If not, so many harm. You heard the chair's recommendation to pass House Bill 2329 with amendments. Any reservations or objections to the recommendation? Hearing none, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Um, House bill, the next bill is House Bill 2449, House Draft 1. This is relating to the Hawaii State Archives. It appropriates funds for staff positions, as well as issuing general obligation bonds uh, to finance construction of additional building space. Um, chairs are gonna recommend we um, pass with amendments uh, we will delete the uh, part three. Uh, we will also delete that paragraph related to, um, that was requested in testimony. Um, we will further defect the date to July 1st, 2050 and make any other technical non-substantive amendments for the purposes of clarity and consistency. Any discussion? If not, Senator Ihara. You heard the chair's recommendation to pass 2449 with amendments. Any reservations or objections to the recommendation? No. Senator Favela is a no. Any other no's or uh, reservations? Uh, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Um, last two bills, the 315 agenda, um, House Bill 2240, House Draft 1. This is relating to other post-employment benefits, um, authorized general obligation bonds for the payment of, or prepayment of um, other post-employment benefits liability. Um, the chair is gonna recommend we pass with amendments, um, primarily uh, technical amendments to clarify some of the language. Um, and we will further defect the date to July 1st, 2050. Any discussion? 
Not Senator Ihara. Any reservations or objections to the chair's recommendation to pass Senate Bill 2240 with amendments? Hearing none, I'll cast an aye vote for all members present. The recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Um, final bill, House Bill 2510, House Draft 2, uh, related to income. This makes the state earned income tax credit refundable and permanent, provides for carry forward of non-refundable credits previously claimed, incrementally increases the minimum wage and tip credit beginning, in, beginning on July 1st, 2023. Um, Chair is going to recommend we pass with amendments. Um, we'll delete section one, uh, which is um, kind of a preamble for the act. Um, we are doing something a little different, so the preamble will not match, so we'll delete that. Um, we'll also delete section two relating to earned income tax credit. Uh, there's currently a House bill in the Ways and Means Committee are related to earned income tax credit and we are um, with the understanding that it's going to be heard there. Um, we'll amend the minim minimum wage provisions by sub substituting the schedule of increases uh, contained in Senate Bill 2018. This would be $12 beginning October 1st, 2022, $15 beginning January 1st, 2024, and $18 for our beginning January 1st, 2026. We'll also uh, amend the tip credit provisions by um, decreasing the current 75 cent tip credit to 35% per hour beginning October 1st, 2022 and zero cents per hour beginning January 1st, 2026. We'll make the effective date upon approval and make any other technical non-substantive amendments for the purposes of clarity and consistency. Any discussion? If not, Senator Ihara. We're voting on the chair's recommendation to pass House Bill 2510 with amendments. Uh, because of this bill, I'll call the roll. Chair Taniguchi? Aye. Vice Chair aye. Senator Chang? Aye. Senator Keoho Kololi? Aye. Senator Favela? Aye. Recommendations adopted. Thank you very much, members. We'll recess.